Greetings, health and wellness seekers. Welcome to the Life Enthusiast online radio and TV network, restoring vitality to you and to the planet. I am your co-host, Rashid Lamri, uh, your wellness advocate and guide, speaking from the Middle Eastern country of the United Arab Emirates. And with us today is the Life Enthusiast founder and health coach, Martin Patella. Uh, thank you and welcome aboard, Martin. Thank you, Rashid. I have known Rashid for, oh, 15 years, I think. We have had many conversations and I've watched Rashid grow from uh, uh, an enthusiast to dedicated student. It's an impressive growth. Yeah, and um, have consumed a, a respectable number of products over the years, Martin. And um, I kid you not, the vast majority of them really uh, stood with me and affected my well being uh, in really special ways. Um, maybe if to present on another podcast altogether. But today, um, I would like to talk about a very interesting. Um, technology, um, sacred one indeed, it's called the Star Chamber. Uh, but before I do that, I would actually like to know, um, we start off actually by saying, uh, tell us a bit about yourself and what led you to initiating the Life Enthusiast Company. I think the relevant part to this story would be that back in... Uh... 2003, we were introduced to Jim Carter, who at that point was running his uh, TWLT, which he ended up calling Twilight, but then later revealed that that stood for the world's largest test. And uh, Jim came to us with his uh, personal history of being primarily in mining. His specialty was precious metal extraction. Myself, I had been in pursuit of health. Uh, my story starts somewhere around to 1977, 70, yeah, 77, when I got poisoned with mercury in a dentist's office. And uh, the next 10, 12 years, I spent trying to figure out how to get better using the mainstream methods. And by about 1989, I had this realization that there's just no way that I'm going to get better just following the mainstream and decided to apply my own study. My ori original education is in computer science and business administration. So as a systems analyst, I had the training to apply research, so I did. This is in the days before the internet. So this was library time, books, and uh, doing it the hard way. And uh, it's eventually I figured it out. I figured out that the uh, healing is possible and that the information is readily available, just not publicized in the mainstream. So by the time about 1997, or eight rolled around, I had reversed most of my health problems, and there were many. And by about 2001, I was ready to essentially begin my mission as a health advocate rather than as a management consultant, which I was up to that point. Yeah, similar to the position that I'm uh, here now, uh, being a health advocate. Um, I started all the way back in 2008. And um, without having to blow your horn, Martin, I, well, you were my main influence. Uh, you were the first to help me on my path to become a better, um, better version of myself through health and wellness solutions. So with that being said, um, yeah, Jim Carter, his lovely technology, may his soul rest in peace. Um, with my basic research, uh, it seems that he decided to give it uh, a good number of names. 
I'm reading here from my notes, either the Oregon Energy Accumulator or Solid Sunshine or Yin Energy System or Yin Energy System, excuse me. Um, I mean, what on earth is the Star Chamber? Well, Jim Carter started with being introduced to all kinds of technologies that are found all around the earth that are either of ancient origin or perhaps uh, imported from off the planet origin. He told me of some finds somewhere, a cave in Colorado where all kinds of things were stored that uh, he was introduced to. The most interesting things of it was what he called the artifact, which he attempted to replicate. Back in 2005, when I visited him in his office, I actually held it in my hand and I, uh, I uh, interrogated it. I asked it, tell me how old you are. And uh, it said uh, 4,400 years. So that would be 2400 BC or about Moses time. You did this through a dowsing method, Martin? Yeah, I use muscle testing or, or pendulum. And uh, I, I use that in my practice and I ask things. You know, you can, you can ask the universe to tell you whether any statement is true or false. It requires a little bit of investigating from my side, um, although it's something uh, quite impressive to most people anyway, who don't understand the science of dowsing very much. Well, in, in our Western culture, uh, David Hawkins, uh, with his book, Power Versus Force, really made it famous. But there are many, 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 I don't know, thousands, I'm sure, millions, perhaps, of people who just do this. Truth, the universal truth is out there. The universe or the universal consciousness of all human beings of the whole planet together can be interrogated. You can ask it to tell you, and it will. And your body will reflect that. Like when you make a true statement, it will have a different reaction from a false statement. What kind of energetic force does the star chamber uh, access? What does it um, accumulate, so to speak? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are several traditions going back millennia, right? In India, they speak of prana, and in Japan, they speak of ki, and in China, the chi, life force, or love, it's mm -hmm. it, light even, but not light in the sense of photons, but in the sense of the life-affirming energies. One of the terms also was uh, promoted was organ. It would be the energy that holds living things alive. And this force wow. can be attracted and accumulated and transmitted. Like, for example, a Reiki master will channel this energy, right? It will ch channel it energy through themselves into the subject. They don't mm -hmm. try to project it. They, they just channel it, right? In the process of trying to understand the water changing technology that this artifact represented, Carter was trying to find a way how to replicate it. And uh, so when he chipped this stone and looked at the structure of it, he understood that it's some kind of an ancient concrete that has embedded in it uh, this shiny material that he later called laminar crystal. Laminar because it's very flaky. Laminar is in multiple thin layers. So this, this material works really well at attracting the force. Many people make argon accumulators. This, this argon energy is uh, organizing, the organizing energy of the universe. And... Uh, and this organ energy is capable of structuring water correctly and supporting life. And so when, when Carter put this artifact in water, it changed the structure of the water. It changed it in such a way that uh, we could measure it. it. It would lower the surface tension, which is as if you put soap in the water, but there was no soap added. 
it would lower the acidity as if you added baking soda, but none was added. It would lower the ORP electric charge as if you added an antioxidant like vitamin C, but none was added. And it would also lower the, uh, or make smaller the uh, cluster sizes for which I don't have an equivalency in chemical physical example, but when you make the clusters smaller, the water becomes more absorbable at the cellular level. This, this is called the aquaporin channel. Each cell will absorb water into itself through a tiny opening in the cellular membrane. And it will only take water that's one molecule at a time rather than clusters. So when you're encountering water that's got high static electric charge, those water molecules are clustering together into bundles of multiple molecules and they will not go through the opening. So even though you may be irrigating your, water, your body with water, you are actually not hydrating yourself at the cellular level. Maybe only a small percentage of the water is in this unclustered state. Whereas post-processing of with these crystals, they, the clustering falls apart. So anyway, there's this argon energy and people who make argon devices know that it behaves opposite to the electric current. Uh, mm -hmm. Materials that are conductive of electricity like copper or silver are blocking the organ energy and objects or materials that are insulators to electricity, such mm -hmm. as uh, silica or silicates of every sort are actually conducting or accumulating this organ energy. Hence these, uh, this material that Carter ended up calling laminar crystal, which he then ended up mixing into a, a potter's clay and uh, creating these objects. Can you just run us through the process of um, how a person would actually engage through um, healing him or herself with the star timber technology? Mm. Is, is there some way of a person uh, healing themselves effectively or is, are there different levels of healing? Explain it to us, please. Jim Carter was partnered with uh, Norman Sheely, Dr. Norman Sheely back in Missouri, and uh, they were doing this research together. Sheely was a well-known um, longevity researcher. The process itself was at some point called two naps and a dip or a bath. And they, they took first a black crystal, which is paramagnetic. And uh, you, you needed to create a, a bed of it large enough that it would hold a human body. So something that's maybe like one meter wide, two meters long, about 10, 15 centimeters deep. You would uh, have enough material in there to create this effect. So you would lay the person on top of it, on top of this paramagnetic material, and it would organize the human energies in such way that detoxification were possible, discharging the energies that hold stuff together. And then you take that person and you put them in a bath. Carter set up a very large bath. It was holding something like 1,500 liters of water, a large tub. And um, Any particular reason? Uh, he liked to go big. Okay. And this water was charged in what he called the star chamber. I'll describe that in a moment, but the, the water was charged. That was meaning that it was unstructured, destructured. At the moment ago, I described how you discharge the water, make it more wet, lower surface tension, lower ORP, lower acidity, and so on. That was the water. And into the water, he dissolved magnesium chloride. And magnesium has this profound effect of activating the parasympathetic side of the autonomic nervous system. That is the side we call rest, repair, digest, the opposite of fight or flight. 
So when you're in that magnesium bath, you're activating repairs and healing. And mm -hmm. then the third phase, uh, you would be placed on another bed, this time of the laminar crystal, which it itself accumulates this argon energy or the life force. And so when you're lay, lying down on that, all cells in the human body are being charged up. You can think of every cell in the human body as a little capacitor and uh, you can charge it up. You can fill it with energies. I remember when, uh, when I was done with that uh, treatment for the next six weeks, I had abundance of energy. Like I couldn't tire. I could stay up late and get up early and uh, think clearly. Just, it, it was phenomenal. Wow. That's, that's tremendous. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, why do you think it lasted for that long? <laughs> I couldn't tell you. I'm just a sample of one. Okay. In general, uh, you know, we have installed some of these star chambers elsewhere. And I, I have some data from Dr. Sergio Focone. He's from uh, Turin, Italy. And uh, he's uh, treated many people and he's kept meticulous notes. And he also has developed a method by which he measured how people were doing. And what he showed me is that uh, after six sessions, the immune system changed profoundly. All of a sudden, he started seeing the markers that are associated with aging mm. reverse. Uh, that makes a lot of sense as to how would some how someone would probably once they jack up their immune system and hopefully becomes modulated for the, all the right reasons and of course they could feel all of this uh, how can I say proper cellular communication come into place and in a very harmonious fashion could I uh, is that, have I said that correctly yeah it's a reasonable speculation we, okay. we think that the uh, stress levels go down and the uh, immune system starts working better and, yeah, the body starts repairing itself. So for most customers, they come out of this experience fresh as a daisy, uh, becomes like a salubrious experience, so to speak, and um, they go through this process of cellular rejuvenation. Mm -hmm. It's not all roses. <laughs> There's a downside to it, which is all of our memories, emotional and otherwise, are stored in soft tissues of the body. So okay. when you take this bath, you're releasing things that have been stored. So if you have unresolved emotional problems, you will be dealing with them. Could you give us a, a simple example, Martin? Well, for myself, for example, when I got back from the treatment, my phone wasn't ringing. I, I was there sitting in the office, but nobody was calling me. So, so I, had to, I resorted to calling my uh, spiritual friend, asking him, well, can you please take a look at what's going on? And uh, it came back with, you picked up some dark energies that are blocking your full expression. We need to purge it. So uh -huh. we, we did an equivalent to an exorcism. We uh, worked on releasing these stuck energies and sending them back to the light. Wow. That's, that must have been a very, um, how can I say, uh, uh, unusual and strange well, not to be strange, but it certainly is humbling because uh, I mm -hmm. was having to admit that I personally didn't have the power to deal with it. We, we've had okay. issues with the star chambers, mainly, mainly with the operators, you know, staff you hire to, to work there because mm -hmm. uh, they tend to be uh, people that you're hiring for lower wages to be helpers, like wiping down the tubs or... Uh, changing sheets, working people. Okay. They, they were not prepared to have uh, this level of spiritual advancement uh, imposed upon them. Well said.
Well said. All right. Um, so now that you've explained the uh, what you call the dynamics, the, the design of the star chamber system, or I would call it now the rejuvenation station, as you had mentioned in previous at previous times, um, what else do you think could be a flavorable addition to um, maintain a person's well-being after utilizing such a star chamber? You could certainly take a lot of these tools home. First of all, this this technology itself is used for charging water, right? So we can we can create charged water, and we can create charged products, which we have. So one of them is called prills, which is magnesium oxide pellets that have been processed through this organ energy accumulator. And they have the capacity to clear water. So you're able to take these home with you together with some of the items with the laminar crystal baked in. And you can clear your water. So you'll be drinking water that's more hydrating, lower surface tension, lower ORP, lower and so on, right? Mm -hmm. Another uh, item you can take with you is the magnesium chloride in charged water. We call it the magnesium oil. Carter had other names for it as well. He at some point called it, called it vital drops. They also called it magic oil. Uh, these, these things were um, or are available to this day because we understand the technology and we're carrying on. Carter himself, unfortunately, passed on in 2005. In, in some sense, I think that God has a very good sense of humor. <laughs> taking, taking the man who promotes uh, longevity out at 59. With that being said, I, I read here from uh, uh, part of his biography, Jim Carter was extremely passionate about, <clears throat> excuse me, about his work as he dedicated 30 years of his life replicating and refining the ancient water treatment technology. Um, it took him that long. And um, could you tell me why it, he possibly took that long to figure out things? Well, um, I'll send you the picture of it, but uh, you're looking at a piece of stone. You're holding it in your hand. You're wondering, well, number one, what does this do? Number two, how does this work? Number three, what of this is relevant and what of this is not? Like, if you were, you, you just don't know. You're trying to interrogate it and you're trying to figure out what it means, how it, how it works and how to replicate it. And it took him a while. I mean, how so, do you decipher an ancient mystery, right? The pearls look a bit like grains of rice. They're magnesium oxide pellets. And we put them into the argon accumulator. And the way the argon accumulator is built and it's, it's a toroidal shape, essentially donut. But if you could visualize a large donut, it was 100,000 pounds of this laminar crystal. Where the, Wow. Um, it was about six feet tall. And the outer diameter was what the warehouse allowed, which is about you know, 100 feet, 30 meters. And the inner diameter was about uh, 24 or something like that. Anyway, it was big enough to hold a couple of pallets of material at the center. So you could, well, visualize, visualize a large donut with a circular hole in the middle of it. And you mm -hmm. could lower down into the center, whatever you wanted. Well, he put a pool of water down into the middle. That's where he would take his soaks. After Carter died, the landlord was upset and gave us only two weeks to uh, remove everything. Uh, I wasn't able to go there, but uh, a couple of people I know went there to try and rescue as much of the material as possible. And they said when, when they were working in the middle of the donut, in the middle of the toroid, it was like standing in the middle of a pyramid. 
the the hair on their back would stand straight. You know, it's just a strong energy field. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this probably would answer my question as to how it may be able to impact um, the electromagnetic fields of an environment. Oh, hmm. Mm -hmm. not really. I don't know. It attracts the life force and it's willing to give it up. When you're holding it in your hand, it feels good. So probably maybe to um, help me answer my own question is because it deals with opposing forces, as you had mentioned, one being um, e expressive and the other one being inert or explosive and implosive, because of the opposing nature of that energy of the star chamber makeup, probably to help reduce any form of chaotic activities happening within the environment electromagnetically. The electromagnetic forces, the Wi-Fi and the electric currents, overhead power lines and the wiring in the walls and so on, they all have a negative effect on living things, plants or humans or animals. Whereas, right. the, whereas this other technology has a positive effect on us. And so it's not that it's interacting with the forces. It's more like that it's supporting the expression of life within us. Okay. Well, um, Martin, thank you for that real, um, I would say, in-depth um, explanation about all the things related to the star chamber technology, its applications, maybe a little bit of its history as well. Um, I appreciate you sharing all of this valuable knowledge. Um, it's in a sense almost sacred. People have lost touch with um, such, um, I would say, way back yet um, Un under investigated forms of technology and not really taken to the forefront of the modern day uh, health and wellness solutions. So uh, what do you yeah. have to say about that? That's an important point you're making. With every inventor that's uh, removed or silenced or eliminated, a lot of amazing technologies can disappear. And we have many examples of that. That there have been technologies like uh, Royal Rife, for example, or Nikola Tesla, or I, I could probably come up with other names, should have maybe brought myself a list. But many of these types of technologies have been invented or reinvented or attempted to be introduced and then shut off and silenced and taken out. And this is one of those things that it may just disappear because uh, people are just not um, either willing to invest or, or willing to explore. It's, it's outside of the uh, Western scientific mindset. This operates outside of it, but it operates, it exists, it works. We just don't understand it well. And uh, if we let it go, then it'll be lost again until somebody else rediscovers it. Very well said. And um, at this point, I think is a good time to conclude our conversation and um, to allow, uh, hopefully, the true seekers of health and wellness to get in touch with you and find out more information if they desire. So Martin, how can people get in touch with you, please? Well, I am available at Life Enthusiast. The website is life-enthusiast.com. And uh, if they want to phone, 775-299-4661. Thank you very much for uh, doing this interview. I certainly hope that your brothers in the Middle East, especially in the United Arab Emirates, 
will pick it up and will uh, contact you or me with a inquiry to uh, perhaps introduce this technology in your world. Thank you. Thank you very much, Martin. And uh, yes, in terms of also getting in touch with me, please um, do not hesitate to either email me uh, with rma underscore ironman at yahoo.com or simply phone me on my mobile number 0097-150-793-6368. Thank you very much, Martin. And we will reconnect soon. Be well. Thank you.